Benny in San Jose, California writes to me and he says, Paul, what the heck does it mean when audio enthusiasts talk about reference levels or their reference speakers and amps? I'm an audiophile neophyte and I often hear you and audio equipment review reviewers refer to the reference this or the reference that. How do I know when I have a reference level amp or set of speakers? Thanks for all you do. Your videos have been a great guide in my journey down the rabbit hole. <laughs> hey, it's a rabbit hole uh, to audio nirvana, Benny. Well, <laughs> my pleasure, and I hope I don't send you down even, even, even further. A, I have a pair of reference loudspeakers upstairs. Want to buy them? Um, no, the Infinity IRS fives are certainly a reference quality set of speakers, and many reviewers have what they term their reference system. And that's basically just the system that they use as their reference, you know, a, a grounding point. And for a reviewer, it's one that's been developed over the years. So some reviewers might have a set of, I don't know, Wilson Audios or Magico speakers or um, wh whatever they consider to be of reference quality. And then they have their reference electronics. And it's merely a benchmark system or product that all others are judged against. And you have to have some kind of starting point. And that's where those references come from. Now, years ago, Harry Pearson at the Absolute Sound and Jay Gordon Holt of Stereophile, the founders of each magazine, used the term reference when they referred to acoustic music. That was their reference, the sound of acoustic music unamplified in a correct space. So that if I had a small combo sitting in a decent room, that would be my reference, so that a banjo playing or a set of drums playing or a violin playing, I could listen to that, I could memorize it, and then when I go back to reproduce that sound, I have a reference in my head, a reference of what an actual violin sounds like or an actual banjo sounds like in unrecorded, live, unamplified acoustic space, okay? So that's sort of the, how that all kind of developed. And then later on we would get, let's say, Harry or uh, Jay Gordon would get a piece of equipment that so closely reproduced that reference live sound that that became their reference amplifier. And everything else was judged against that. And so that's basically what it means. So I hope that helps. Okay, thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.